turn with me. Uh, I was going to have you at Numbers 13, but I think we're going to go to Exodus 13. Exodus chapter 13. I want to give you something that I'll try to be a blessing to you this morning. I uh, don't really know where I'm going to go. got more stuff than I'm probably going to be able to cover here this morning. Uh, but I am glad that you're here this morning. And I hope and pray that you get something that will be a help to you. I, I want to try to help you today. In Exodus uh, chapter... Thirteen. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, I've changed. I, mean, I keep changing my mind. If you will, turn to Numbers thirteen. I keep changing my mind. I'm sorry. It's, it, it's sometimes when you're a pastor, you 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 worry and you stress and you want to preach the message that the Lord has. He knows who's going to be here and who's not. I don't, so I, he's the one I'm trusting to give me what needs to be preached. And uh, for those of you that are wondering, I do have two messages up here today. Amen. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out which one the Lord wants me to preach. And I'm going to give you this one this morning uh, from this passage. Uh, look at, I'm not going to read it all. We're just going to read a couple, couple sections here. Uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I will give the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their father, ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And then in uh, verse 21, they went up and searched the land. Then in verse 25, And they returned from searching the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron to the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the, all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We come unto the land whither thou sendest, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So you get the picture. Twelve men go in and spy out the land. They've just been delivered. Uh, they've just been delivered out of the bondage of Egypt. They've come to the Red Sea. They've sent spies over. They've, they're searching the land 40 days. They come back with a sample of the fruit of it. And, and, and now they're hearing the report. Verse 28. And it says, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. That was a giant. Now watch this. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb settled the people before the Lord and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are. For we are well able to overcome it. Well, I like that. Well, wouldn't it be great if that story had stopped there? Would it be great? All of Israel's history could have been different had that story stopped there and they followed Caleb, went into the promised land, and, 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 and did everything that they were supposed to do. But it didn't stop there, did it? Notice that it keeps going. Verse 31, it says, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and the people we saw are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Now, here's what's going on. Ten out of twelve come back afraid of what they saw. They said it's going to be hard, they're going to be fighting, they're walled cities, they've got armies, there's giants over there for goodness sake. There's no way... We can take it. But Caleb and Joshua, they said, listen, God's on our side. 
Yeah, they got giants. Yeah, they got walled cities. We've got God. We've got all that we need. Amen. Amen. We ought to go and just do what the Lord says, and with God's help, He'll deliver us. Amen. But they didn't. Why? Because the people listened to the majority. The majority were afraid. The majority did not want to go. The majority <coughs> wants to go back to Egypt. You keep reading in the story, they start talking about calling out a captain and setting him over them to lead them back down to Egypt. Here they've just been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. Remember the Lamb, the blood on the doorpost? Picture of cross, picture of us being just delivered by the blood and rather than going into the promised land, a picture of the victorious Christian life, they want to go back to Egypt. What I'm going to preach to you this morning is a shame. And it, and it is a picture of today's Christianity too. Most Christians will never enter the victorious Christian life. Most Christians will never experience God's best. God has prepared for you a land flow of milk and honey. God has a purpose for your life. God has a will for your life. But most people will never enter into that. Most people will die in the wilderness. Why? Afraid of the giants. Afraid of the fight. Afraid of the harshness. Oh, it's too hard, preacher. It's too hard. Oh, that river's too deep. Oh, it's too scary over there. Most will be like the ten. Most will want to go back to their old lifestyle. Yes, they're saved. They're under the blood. They've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb just like you and I. But they will never experience God's best. They'll always settle for the wilderness. That generation wandered in the wilderness till they died. Never entered into the promised land. And you know what's sad? You know what's really sad? A lot of Christians will wander around in this wilderness and never experience just what God had for them. Till you find God's will for your life and get it. You know what a success is? The world will tell you what success is. is find what you're good at and find something you love and find something you can sell. Find something you can do and make a lot of money and it ain't work for you and that's a success. I'll tell you what success is. Finding out what God wants you to do and doing it. Amen. 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 God blesses you. Amen. When you find His will. It is, God's will is not some mysterious thing that nobody can find and it's out there in la la land and you've got to pray six months, sit on the stump, beat yourself in the back while mosquitoes eat you. No, you don't have to go through some crazy penance. God's will is easy. You know you should read your Bible. You know you should pray. You know you should witness. You know you should be faithful to church. You know what to do. Do those things, and while doing those things, He'll show you the next step. It's not mysterious. You just got to get serious. You've just got to want it. And if you'll want it and start looking for it and moving toward it, He'll start opening the doors and start showing you what His will for your life is. Not just for, 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 for the church or for, for the fact, for your life. He has a will for you. Don't be like the children of Israel. Don't wander 40 years and never experience. 40 years looking into the promised land. 40 years just running around the skirts of it. 40 years lusting for what they've got over there, but never getting to, never getting to live it. Never getting to experience it. 40 years wandering. What if? I'd have done right. What if I'd have made that right choice? What if I'd have listened to the Lord? What if I'd have surrendered then? Forty years. That's a lot of Christians today. Amen. They're in the wilderness, wandering around, longing for better, wanting and desiring more, knowing something's missing, but not willing 
to make that commitment. There's giants over there. It's too hard, preacher. Yeah, there's going to be rivers to cross. There's going to be walled cities to conquer. There's going to be giants in the way from time to time. But it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. Amen. It's funny, this world will fight for a dollar, but they'll turn their back on the Bible or church in a heartbeat. They'll fight for a dollar or a raise or a position at work, but they'll turn their back on family and friends just like that. It's amazing. It really is amazing. And then wonder why God don't love them. They choose to remain in the wilderness. They choose to stay where they are rather than going on. They choose to settle for what this life has to offer. They're only eating the scraps they find in the wilderness. They live off the scraps of God's blessings they have in the wilderness. Rather than in a land flowing with milk and honey. They were living in tents while those in the land flowing with milk and honey lived in houses. They lived in tents and in camps rather than cities. They drank water from a rock rather than the cool springs and wells. They worked for all that they had and it would have been a hard life. Camping's fun for a couple days. Could you imagine 40 years? Man, it might be good. That, you know, it, that I looked it up and it talked about the taste of it, like kind of like honey and stuff. But how would you like to eat that for 40 years? When they could be eating grapes and venison. They could, I, don't, don't feed me no goat. Mm -mm. <laughs> I smell a goat. You ever smell a goat? If it tastes anything like it smells, I don't want it. That is terrible smell. I know Angie tried goat milk one time. She said it tasted like it smelled. And I said, don't, don't even think about getting me. It just made me gag thinking about it. Amen. Goat cheese. That, now that's what they, but see, they could have had that. They could have had that rather than manna and water for 40 years. What are you settling for? They never lived in Cain. They, they only lingered around the skirts of it. I'm trying to help maybe somebody make a decision this morning as we look at this passage. I'm tired of this wilderness. I'm tired of just settling for what this world has. I'm tired of following the majority of the people and out of fear, not willing to, 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 to give in and just do what the Lord had had me to do. I'm going to surrender today. <coughs> Maybe you're here and you're lost. You need to get saved. That's the decision you need to make. But maybe there's a Christian here and you know that your life is not where it ought to be. You know your home's not where it ought to be. You know your family's not there. You know God's got more for you and you want it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to heaven and God say, you know, if you'd have done this, I would have gave you all this. I want everything God's got for me. Amen. 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 If God's got wisdom for me, I want it. If God's got understanding for me, I want it. If God's got a blessing here or a blessing there, whatever God has for me, that's what I want. Amen. I want all that He wants to give me. I want God's best. Amen. 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 I don't want to settle. I don't want to be one of those Christians say, well, ho hum, you know, hey, everybody else is okay and fine with this. I want, I want everything God has planned for me. Amen? Amen. I don't want to wander in the wilderness too fearful to take a step out or a leap of faith, too fearful to witness, too fearful to, to teach a Sunday school class, too fearful to get in the choir, too fearful to get on the bus, too fearful to, to, to do a mission work or to go help a missionary, too fearful to give or too fearful to help, too fearful to do anything. That's what they were. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. <coughs> but boy, we look around today and people are so afraid of everything. Afraid of public opinion. Listen. I'm going to do you a favor. Your mom and dad should have done this a long time ago for you. Grow up. Amen. 
Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt you. Amen. They'll never hurt us. They'll never hurt us. All this world can do when we don't live up to their standard, which is a low standard, a perverted standard, amen. When we don't cater to their new terminology, they don't own definitions of words. They can't change it when they choose. They can't dictate facts, amen, and just all of a sudden make up new facts like there's more genders than two. And because we don't cater to them, or they'll call you a name. And out of fear, a lot of Christians wouldn't dare step up and say that's stupid. I told you years ago, we are witnessing the death of common sense. And they're trying to bury it right next to morality in Washington. We are witnessing it. And if we don't stand up, our kids aren't going to have any more sense. Amen. And when we remain silent, they think we're okay with it and we're accepting it. Well, what we tolerate, I've said over and over and I'll repeat it over and over, but you've got to get this. It's so true. History proves this. What we tolerate, the next generation will embrace. If we tolerate wicked, filthy sin, guess what they're going to embrace? We've been tolerating the homosexual movement. We've been tolerating the transgenders. We've been tolerating it. And now it's to the point they've lowered the age of consent in a lot of states now. Why? For the pedophiles that's coming up next. Right. Right. It's not enough. It's not enough that they pervert and pollute their mind. Now they want to pollute their body as young as they can. And some states have actually lowered the age of consent. Women 14, young girls, 14, 16 year old can make decisions like that on their own and the parents can't step in and do anything about it. I know of cases here in North Carolina where a 16 year old had been with a 30 year old and the law did nothing about it. Amen. He ought to be in jail. Amen. 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 Parents mad as hornets and the law won't do anything. Yep. You say, preacher, no, no, that's the world. That's what you're fearing. That's what's keeping you from entering the promised land is you're worried about what they will think of you. Yep. Amen. Who cares what they think of you? Who cares what they say about you? As long as you line up with that book, you've got good sense, common sense, morals, stand your ground. We're right, they're wrong. Amen. Amen. We've been right all along. And just because they're louder and they are the main callers, homophobic, transphobic, I got a phobia of phobias. <laughs> Amen. Somebody called me a homophobic one time. I said, You're right, I am. I'm homophobic. I'm scared to death of them. I'm scared of the judgment they're bringing on this nation. Amen. I don't fear them. I fear the judgment that we're going to go through because we're tolerating. I fear what they're going to do to our kids. I fear what they're doing to morality and our minds and the hearts of the next generation. Mm. Here, let's look at a few things here this morning. First of all, I want you to notice their opposition. Look at, look at verse 27. And they told him and said... We came to the land whither thou, sir, thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. So the, the opposition. Now I want you to notice something. If you try to live for the Lord, if you try to do what's right, you're going to face opposition. The devil, the world, this flesh, you're going to face, that's just the facts. If you try to live for God, you will have some problems. There's going to be opposition. Uh, there will always be those that oppose you living right. Why? Some will do it because, uh, who are you to judge me? Some will do it because you convict them by your clean living. 
Some say, oh, they think they're goody two shoes. Look at them, snooty Pharisees. Got their nose up in there. Think they're better than everybody else. I'm so sick and wicked. A Jew had to die for me. Right. Amen. 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 Hey, I'm better than you. I just made the right choice. Right. Amen. 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 I had enough common sense to know I didn't want to burn. Amen. Amen. Common Amen. sense will tell you there's a God. You can't go outside on a sunny day, hear the birds sing, feel the breeze blow, smell the, the spring air, hear the water, the creek going down through there, see the animals that he's been, and think this is an accident. You're crazy. You got more faith than I got. Right. Amen. Amen. I at least believe somebody had to do it. You, you think it came from nothing and just blowed up and there it is. I'll tell you what, go to a junkyard, get you a hundred bolts and keep throwing it against the wall and see if it comes out of car. Yeah. <laughs> right. Amen. You might get a Chevrolet, but you're not going to get a Ford. <laughs> 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 Amen. <laughs> Every now and then you might get one of them rice burners. Amen. But anyway, oh, <coughs> preacher, you're in trouble. Listen, if you try to live right, this world's going to hinder you. They're going to hate you. They're going to harass you. They're going to call you names. They're going, to, they're, they're going to give you trouble. Listen, when I got saved, I was working at a dealership. And man, it was just like I come in and said, I got the plague. Where before they was around me, they, I could feel them pull them back. And when I began to witness, they got further. And then they tried a new tactic. Then it was life. Then it was name calling. Then it was trying to shame. Then it was trying to tempt. Hey, won't you come over and party with us? Hey, don't you remember you used to like to go do this? Won't you come do that? We're going to go fishing. We're going to go do this. Knowing that if I go fishing, they're going to be drinking. Knowing if I go fishing, they're going to be telling dirty jokes. Knowing if I go fishing with them, they're going to be doing the things they always done. No, I ain't going fishing. Tempting you. Because, yeah, this flesh liked that stuff. It liked the drinking. It liked the party life. It liked, it liked that stuff. But the new man said it ain't right. And I want what's better. See, the world thinks they're having a good time. But all it does is empty promises. When it's all said and done, I've spent 40 years in the wilderness puking my guts out, not remembering what I ought to remember. Not, I mean, seriously, rather than laying up treasures in heaven, right. rather than reaching somebody with the gospel and getting a real friend, not just a bum buddy that's there as long as you're buying. Yeah. Right. Amen. Or as long as everything's going good, but as soon as trouble hits, they're gone. <clears throat> There's a difference. Listen, you're going to have some opposition. Don't fear them. Don't fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You know what he told Joshua when they finally get to go in 40 years later? He says, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. He tells them that three times in Joshua chapter 1. Why? Because it's going to take some strength to live for God. Everybody says that being a Christian, all that's for Christians, you know. I think it was Jesse Ventura or somebody, wasn't it? The governor who said that, that it was for sissies. He don't know what it's like. You don't know what? You don't know what it is? I tell you. Tell me. Tell, I'll tell you this. He's got, got enough guts to take a Bible and go walk up to his friends and family and sit down and tell them, say, listen, the way you're living, don't line up with this book. If you don't get right, I'm afraid you're not going to make it to heaven. There's a hell prepared for people that reject Jesus Christ. See, it's one thing to say you're brave. It's another thing to live brave. To actually stand up for something. Oh, they'll stand for a spotted owl. Oh, you can't kill it. You can't, you can't, be, you, you, you can't move out this forest and build this, this plant, bring in hundreds of jobs and help all these families. You, you can't tear down these woods because there's a spotted owl lives in there. A rare one. I think it's the last one. The last spotted owl. If it's the last one, I say shoot the thing, let's eat it. Might as well enjoy it. It takes two. It's just going to die old age, amen. What good's it done? It takes two. If it's the last one, might as well enjoy it. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. Get you a bumper sticker that says spotted owl, the other white meat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they preach that's horrible. That's terrible. No, it's just common sense. Quit worrying about what people think and start worrying about what God knows. Amen. The Bible says He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows if He's been dealing with you. He knows if you've been rolling something around your head. He knows what you are thinking right now. Ain't that scary? Amen. I mean, that's scary. You worry about the government sneaking in and looking in on you. God already knows. He knows what you're going to think <coughs> next week before you <coughs> up. He already knows. He loves you anyway. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. He, he ha I honestly believe God wants what's best for us. Amen. We say we want the best, and we go and try to get the best and try to find happiness and joy and all that stuff. But you know what? We're doing it wrong. We're looking back to Egypt. And Egypt is where bondage is. Egypt is where enslavement is. Egypt is where that death was. We need to turn and look to the promised land. Yeah, they'll show us there'll be some battles. There'll be some foes. There'll be some people going after us. But you know what? God's with us. Amen. God went with them and he delivered them. And as they followed the Lord and obeyed the Lord, they got victory after victory after victory, and they were blessed by the Lord. Not in the wilderness. Not back in Egypt. But when they started moving forward, they got, they got where God's will was for them. God wanted them there. But there will be opposition. Not only that, but I want to point out this. There are going to be some occupants in there. When you go in, you're going to find some others that's living right that will be encouragement to you and being a blessing to you. But every now and then, you're going to find some in there that they're going to try to discourage you. Oh, don't... Now, now listen. You remember when the spies went in, this was Israel's enemies. They were going to conquer these people. But when they went in there, they found Rahab. Here's this lady that helped these spies out. Hit them, remember? After 40 years in the wilderness, they went and spied out the land again. There's somebody over there helped them. See, you'll find out there's more help in, in God's will than there is out of God's will. Out of God's will, your life's always going to be a struggle. Out of God's will, you're always going to wonder what if and why, why is this going on why, and not understand stuff. Confusion. But when they got in God's will, they had purpose. They had sense of direction. They knew what they were supposed to be doing. I tell you, I would hate to live my life just wandering in a wilderness. No aim, no ambition, no goals, no purpose in life. Just, just living to exist. That's the way my dog does. That's what my dog does. He gets up to eat, to go outside a few times a day, and lay on the back of the chair. He goes up, sits on the back of that chair, and just sits there all day. Every now and then, if somebody pulls up, he'll raise his head and bark. And that's the most excitement he'll have. You say, preacher, I'd like a life like that. Help yourself. Help yourself. I don't know about you, but I would like a life maybe where I can get to go into the promised land. Amen. 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 I'd like to live the victorious Christian life and be where God wants me and have the blessing God's want me, doing what God's gifted me to be able to do, doing what God would have me to do, and getting the blessings for doing it. Amen. 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 But when you go in, there's going to be some people that will encourage you. There's always going to be complainers. There's always going to be those that will side with you and tell you it can't be done. They'll side with you and tell you it's too hard. They'll side with you and tell you the river's too deep. The walls is too thick. The giants are too big. You can't do it. Don't listen to them. Amen. Don't listen to them. I had to ignore people. When I got saved, people looked at me and they said, you'll never amount to anything. I remember my own family said, give him six months, he'll be back. 30 years ago. 
I'm still going forward. Amen. Why? Because God really got a hold of me. Right. This wasn't just some show. This wasn't just some feeling. I asked the Lord to save me because I realized I was lost and going to hell. I actually believed it. Amen. I believe that Jesus died to save my soul. I believe that he loved me enough to do that for me. I believe that he rose again the third day. I believe that he's coming back. Amen. And I want to be ready. Amen. And I have not stopped. A lot of people, you hear a lot of people's testimony where I stayed when I was young, then I was out in the world for a little while. I was out in the world until I was 22 years old. Then God saved me. Well, God saved me. I've been in church ever since. I've not turned my back. I was one of them rare ones, amen, that come in at 22 rather than run out. Usually that age is when they're leaving. Why? Because at that age, they're starting their family. At that age, they're starting their career. At that age, they're, they're doing all this stuff and work. I was working, going to school, raising a family, and in church faithful. Why? Because I want what God's got for me. I want to be in His will. I want to have that victorious Christian life. I want the blessings that come with that. The peace, the joy. Just, now listen. You say, you look at the preacher and say, well preacher, you ain't got nothing. You're right, I don't. Not by this world's standards, I don't. Many of you are better off than me. But, I've got peace in my heart. i got peace in my home. I've got joy. I've got a family that loves me. i got a family that talks to me and spends time with me. I'm wealthy. Amen. I'm wealthy. Because I know some families where the kids don't talk to the parents and the parents won't talk to the kids or the kids ain't talking to each other or, or the parents ain't talking to one or one's always a black sheep and it keeps rotating because you don't know which week they're going to talk good about one talking bad about the other one. You don't know how it's going to switch around. Why? There's always drama and toils and struggles. Right. Wandering in the wilderness, there's always toil, struggles. But if you give it to the Lord and let the Lord take care of it, just love Him and say, Lord, I just want you to lead and guide my family. I want you to make the call on this. Let Him make the choices. Trust Him. Amen. There are going to be obstacles. Family, finances, your health. You'll struggle with your faith from time to time, but you know what? Keep going forward. Don't quit. Don't settle. Don't, don't, don't settle for the wilderness. Don't, definitely don't go back to the bondage and the filth of Egypt. You'll never know what it was like. You'll always wonder. That whole generation died in the wilderness because they focused on the giants. They focused on the fight. They were afraid. They, they, they thought we'd never cross. Listen, you know, God can give you wisdom. Man, one time was coming to the river, the river and they needed to cross. Back in the days when they used to, I, I would love to have been an explorer. I love going in the woods. And you can ask Angie, we go in the woods and we walk. I got trails all through the woods and she'll say something about, where you want to go? Because you, go, you can go in any direction. You, know, you can go over the hills, you can walk the ridge, you can, you know, all kinds of things. She said, I, I, she likes walking them all the time and I'll go with her sometimes. And she says, well, I'll go wherever you want to go. I said, I want to go off, off trail. I like going off trail. You say, why? I like blazing on my own trail. I made those trails and I like walking to kind of see what view's going to be over this edge or when I get around this rock. If what is the view going to be different? Is it going to be pretty? I want to see what's out there. What's next? I, I don't want to see what everybody else is doing. I want to see something new. I, I've got that in me. I always want something new. I want to see something new. But you know what? I was thinking about that and and when, 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 they, when they go through and they start doing that stuff like I would go through and I'd clean out those trails, it was going to be a fight. I'm going to have to fight briars. I'm going to have to fight rocks. I've got to cut trees down. Then I've got to fight the stumps out of the ground if I'm going to make a good trail to walk on or a good trail to take a four wheel or a golf cart through there. You know, you got to widen it out. It takes work. But you know, I found this to be true. Nothing is more satisfying than to step back on a trail 
And what's your granddaughter? Toddling through a place that was so grew up, a rabbit couldn't get through there. It was so grew up, you couldn't see the other end. There was briars and brush and fallen trees and, and, and stuff. It was just so nasty. But now, there goes your granddaughter walking through there. Running through there, skipping. She don't know about the sweat. She don't know about the blood from getting scratched and getting hurt and getting thorns. She don't know about all that that took place to get that. But say, I'm blessed enough to get to see she's walking the trail. You know, every Sunday when I get up, and I don't feel like coming to church, but I do anyway, you say, you're the preacher. I flesh just like you. Every time I don't want to read my Bible, but I do, Every time I do what's hard, they're seeing it. Right. They're going to be the ones who benefit from it. They're the ones, see, I'm just clearing the trail. They're going to be the ones, hopefully, that gets to walk it. And I don't want my trail to be wandering around in the wilderness. I don't want my trail to be just lingering outside the edge and letting them see it's there. I want to just plow right through. I want to go through the. I want to go through the rivers. There's a story about a couple monks one time needed to cross, and I was thinking about those explorers when they come over. They, they this is wilderness. Nobody ever seen this land before, and here they come out. They're going over the Blue Ridge Mountains. Could you be the? Could you imagine to be the first one to go across the Blue Ridge Mountains? Just to walk across there, you're cutting blood trails through there, and you're seeing bear tracks and. And all kinds of stuff in there. And you're hearing the animals and the coyotes probably had wolves and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then stand up and just see off that distance. I wonder what's over there. Look what God's made. Look how beautiful it is. And then get to a river. And it's going too fast. And you look down there's a waterfall that way. Too steep. I can't really get around that way. And you look up this way. It's rocky, mountainous. And... I can't really, this is the only place to go, but the water's too fast. If I step in that water, it's going to sweep me down, and I'm going to be over that waterfall. Could you imagine it? And I heard about a tribe one time. Some monks did it, and a tribe did it. A tribe actually figured it out, and the monks picked it up from the tribe. But what it was, is a tribe of, of nationals one time, in I think it was New Guinea or somewhere like that, but there was a river run so fast nobody could cross it. But yet, there was a tribe that crossed it all the time. See, it was real rocky there. And what they were, they were skinny hunters. They'd go out and hunt. They'd hunt on the other side, and then they would bring back what they killed over for their families to eat. They used the river to keep some of the animals and predators away from them because they knew they lived more on the other side, and they was afraid to cross the water. But how did they get across? We well, see, following the Lord, He'll give you wisdom sometimes. You know what they do? They was little. They didn't weigh no more than anybody else. Oh, they tie vines. No, no, they didn't tie vines to each other and go across. Because if one went down, they could just domino them all. You know, that's what would have happened. They go over there and they'd pick up the biggest rock they could carry. It was so heavy they couldn't hardly carry it. Then they'd walk in the water. And the weight would keep them sunk down. They could walk across. And when they get to the end, they'd set it down and go hunting. And then when they come back, they pick up that heavy rock, and that rock would keep them from washing down. Just common sense. But this world has none. Amen. And sadly, when it comes to God's will, your purpose, God's purpose for your life, sadly, a lot of Christians today don't have any. They step in that stream and get washed right down into the world. They step into that stream, and down they go. Trust the Lord. Grab a hold of Him. He'll, he's the anchor. Amen. He's the one that holds you where you need to be. Father, Lord, do want to thank you for